Hello, my name is Stephen Farou. I'm a French database and SQL consultant and a book author. I have been asked by one of my customers to present SQL best practices to a group of managers and in 15 minutes. This presentation is directly inspired by what I did. I wasn't filling the five slide presentation with bullet points too well. I took an unfair advantage of my being a contractor to ditch the corporate PowerPoint template and do it my own way. And I chose to present instead a short guide on how to get dreadful performance. Don't worry, it's not very technical. To begin with, how does a database server run a query? Actually, it's pretty simple. A server process receives the text of an SQL query and starts with an analysis. A checksum of the text tells whether the query has recently been executed and if the server knows how to handle it. If it's a new query, the server has to compute the execution plan for this query. This is the work of the optimizer, which consumes a significant amount of CPU but usually does a good work. At the simplest, it has to decide things such as how to find the data, table scan or index search. It depends on many things, including the volume of data to fetch. Data is always returned from memory. If it's not in memory, then we have IO operations. Once data is in memory, the database server scans pages, which is CPU intensive, then returns the data, which usually means transit through a network and some latency. And now, the question you are asking to yourself. What can we do to get pathetic performance even on today's powerful hardware? As you have probably noticed, the execution of a query consumes some resources. The trick is to use much more resources than necessary, and I am going in this presentation to give you a number of time-proven recipes to do so. Tried and true recipe number one, haphazard design. You probably know that modern databases and their SQL language derive from the works of Ted God on the left, and that one of the other major figures of the relational theory is God's longtime contributor and friend, Chris Data, on the right. Both were trained as mathematicians, and both have spent decades defining how best to store data through normalization, among other things. Ignoring their principles is the most efficient way to get dreadful performance. There is a direct link between the complexity of the queries that are executed and the underlying model, that is, the design of the database. If you want to be sure to get hurried underperforming queries, you can do no better than start with a written database design. In this matter, a very good choice is the model that is known as Entity Attribute Value, especially if you are programming a business application with tables that will hold millions of rows. In this model, instead of seeing related data as column values in the same row of a table, a horizontal vision, you saw everything in rows connected through identifiers, a vertical vision. The benefit of this model is that where in a standard design you would add a column, which would be programming, you can simply insert an attribute. It becomes parameterizing and is cooler. This is an approach that is very popular with software packages, which can be parameterized beyond recognition and make much of the flexibility of the model. Yes, but. One issue is that you have no way to define constraints on data. The corollary is that you are left with two choices. Either you happily ignore data validation, or you have to validate data in your application and code checks that the database system might have to a large extent done for you. In any case, if inserting data is easy, it has to be processed and programs need to know how to handle new attributes. And when you want to access data with this model, instead of fetching one row from a table, you have to hit as many rows as you want attributes, which is very CPU consuming. I guess that to most people, the word flexible calls to mind visions like this. In this particular case, I think that this image would be closer to reality. To show you what it gives in the trenches, this is an extract from a real query. I've just changed the names of tables that I've seen running in production. It's a slow query. I've colored repeating snippets of codes. If you really want to know what I think of it, what this type of query does is hitting pages in memory and hitting pages in memory and hitting pages in memory again 
again and again. It has very few IOs, but takes a lot of CPU. Now, is it recoverable? Definitely not if you cannot access the source code, which is usually the case with packages. If you can modify the code, you can sometimes bring some improvements, but fixing design issues inside SQL queries is doing something of that kind. Everyone cannot do it, and it's not very natural. What you can do is to try to run a single pass across the tables, then aggregate, but it's just a fix. As there is an aggregate, it's not linear, and it doesn't scale with volume. As soon as volumes become big, whatever you do, you can bid farewell to performances.